Brooklyn Bridge is a modern masterpiece from a bygone age. A symbol of humanity's ability to conquer nature, it was the moonshot of its day. When it was built, it was over twice as long as any suspension bridge on Earth. Its towers once soared above the Manhattan skyline. It was the first landmark of the vertical city. Yet a mysterious disease struck its workforce during construction and paralyzed its chief engineer. The Brooklyn Bridge spans New York's East River, connecting Manhattan and Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Bridge is an immense and complex structure. When it was completed in 1883, it was an engineering work of unparalleled genius. Though built in the age of the horse and cart, it's so strong that it now carries up to 150,000 cars a day. Keeping this old workhorse in top condition is the job of the East River Iron Workers. I love working on a Brooklyn Bridge because it is the most famous bridge in the world. You see it in movies, you see it in commercials, it's everywhere. Once you come up here, it becomes part of you. It's like every time you see it, it's like, that's my bridge. My favorite bridge is the Brooklyn Bridge because it's a work of art. There's no other bridge like this in the world. It costs $3 million a year to keep the bridge operational. Today, the task is to reseal the joints on the cables. There's no way I could ever sit behind a desk, drive a bus, a cab. This is the best job in the world. You have total freedom here. You're out in the open. It's beautiful. I feel a special kinship for this bridge because my great-grandfather had worked on it as an iron worker when it was being built. I'm a fourth-generation iron worker now. When construction began four generations ago in 1870, many thought the bridge would never be completed. Over a mile and a quarter long in total, the main span measures 1,600 feet. The Gothic towers stand 272 feet above the river. They hold the main cables, which in turn support the roadway. Just one of these cables contains more than 3,500 miles of wire, enough to stretch from New York to London, England. The roadway hangs from the main cables via hundreds of vertical suspenders and diagonal stays, which together create a web of wire. The bridge was designed to be robust enough to cope not just with the traffic of the time, but the traffic of the future. Cables, suspenders, and stays must be routinely checked and lubricated. And as long as they are, iron workers like Dave Collins have no doubt the bridge has a long life ahead of it. I have no doubt that this bridge would probably make 500 years. I guess it's carrying about 20 times what it was designed for. So basically what we're going to do today is just inspect the clamps, look for loose ones, and for some uh, erosion of some nature. Yeah, these look pretty good. These are not bad at all. They're pretty tight. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any erosion. 
I'm very comfortable here. Basically, it's like a, a, a second nature built into me where I'm comfortable climbing around. That'll be it for today, I guess. Today, 10 bridges cross the East River. But Manhattan and Brooklyn used to be separate cities, divided by the water. Barbara Milstein is a historian of the Brooklyn Bridge at Brooklyn Museum of Art. There was no way to get off the island, except literally by boat or swim across, which people did do occasionally. Until the brilliant John Roebling burst onto the scene with plans for a suspension bridge twice as long as any other in the world. Tragically, in 1869, he was killed while surveying the proposed site. His son, Washington, took over the project. The key elements of the bridge are its Gothic towers, which stand on the bed of the river. Each tower was built on top of a giant watertight box called a caisson. Made out of wood, Brooklyn Caisson weighed 3,000 tons and was the size of half a city block. The first courses of stone for the towers were laid on top of the caissons, gradually depressing them to the riverbed. As Washington Roebling's drawings show, compressed air was pumped into the caissons. Men entered via an airlock and dug the riverbed by hand. As the digging went on below, the towers were simultaneously constructed above, forcing the caissons ever deeper. The men who went down into this caisson under the river, they really didn't know what they were getting into. They were certainly not men who had done this work before. And you can imagine what the sounds were like. The, it, was, it was alternately hideously hot and freezing cold. The smell was unbearable. The work was hideously hard to do. Several men died from a mysterious illness known as Caisson's disease. In fact, they were victims of what scuba divers now know to be the bends. The trips in and out of the pressurized caissons caused nitrogen bubbles to form in their veins, damaging their nervous systems. Washington Roebling himself was disabled by the bends, and he had to direct operations from his bedroom overlooking the construction site. It took over a year to complete the foundations. The men left the caissons for the last time, and they were filled with concrete. It took almost 14 years to complete the bridge, nearly three times longer than scheduled. It also cost 27 men their lives. It's difficult today to imagine the excitement generated by the opening of the Brooklyn Bridge in 1883. For the first time, people in commerce could move quickly and easily between Manhattan and Brooklyn. The two separate cities began to merge into one Big Apple. After the building of the Brooklyn Bridge, New York began to grow by leaps and bounds, by super speed. It was incredible, the development of the, of the city. And thus, New York became one of the great cities of the world. Taxi driver Peter Franklin is known as the Gabby Cabby. He's an honors graduate from the streets of New York. There is no question that the Brooklyn Bridge is the single most representative item of the city of New York. Because in a way, the Statue of Liberty, yeah, that's the whole country. The Empire State Building, yeah, that's the whole state. But Brooklyn Bridge really is New York. 
Brooklyn Bridge not only links Manhattan with Brooklyn, it also spans separate epochs in American history. When they started it, it was the Old West, cowboys and Indians, wagon trains and all that. By the time they finished the bridge, we were now hurtling towards America being the principal power in the world. So in a way, it was the transitional thing, it was almost like a time machine. It took us from the past and brought us into the modern world. When the Brooklyn Bridge was first completed, there were a lot of people who were afraid to walk across it. They were afraid to walk across it because they had never seen anything of this magnitude. And they thought to themselves, gee, is this thing going to stay up or not? Despite the fears, over 150,000 people turned up to walk across the bridge on the day it opened. As a matter of fact, on the first day, I understand they charged one cent for people to walk across. On the second day, realizing they had a good thing going, they charged three cents. And if that doesn't sum up businessmen of New York, I don't know what does. The pedestrian boardwalk is the heart and soul of the bridge, a place to exercise, socialize, and enjoy the view. It's as much a park as a bridge. And it even has its own police patrols, just in case. The bridge, I think it brings a lot to the city, because both Brooklynites and Manhattanites utilize the bridge on a daily basis, along with tourists from, from the United States and from all over the world. This is the 84th Precinct's favorite beat. We like to talk to people, we like talking to tourists. It's a lot of fun just to be involved with the whole bridge during the you know, day-to-day activities. The bridge generates a sense of well-being. It's just a beautiful spot. It's one of the best spots in the city to be at. Never a bad view from up here. It's always beautiful. Once upon a time, the Brooklyn Bridge was notorious as a suicide spot. Today, the bridge is one of New York's most romantic places. As a matter of fact, many newlyweds have their wedding photos taken here. John Roebling never lived to see the bridge he designed. But his vision ensured that it has flourished for well over 100 years. Brooklyn Bridge remains one of the main arteries of New York, the world's greatest city. That it still thrives in the 21st century is the ultimate accolade to those who designed it and built it. <laughs>